I want to teach about true disciples are doers. True disciple. What is a well true means what, honest? Uh, what is a disciple? Learner and learner. follower of Christ. Okay, a learner or follower uh, of Christ. And uh, we as Christians, we need to be followers of Christ and not only followers, just be doers of, of, of what he told us to do. It's a command. It's a command of God. Uh, in Matthew 7, 21, we're all familiar with it. It says, Not everyone saith, what? Lord, 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 shall enter the kingdom, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. So we're to be doers. Everybody that says, Lord, Lord, you, can you be a disciple of Christ and not be a doer? A lot of people say one thing and they do another. In a lot of cases. Does the devil have a disciple? He does. Huh? He does. Okay, the devil's even got, so we got to be mindful of that, that disciples are not always hearers and doers. I'll try to explain that. Let me go to back to Ezekiel chapter 33. But well, there you get your machine. Exactly. Ezekiel chapter 33, start with verse 30. Ezekiel 33, start with verse 30. And read two verses there. You can hear, you can raise your hand, you can do all kinds of things. And, and uh, go ahead. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh uh, forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as uh, the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with, they ma with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Can you be a hearer and not do anything by the scripture? Sure. So can you can you show much love but you don't really say it and mean it? So you're not being a true disciple unless you're following learning. Now we are to learn. And but you can also the Bible tells us that we can be ever learning and never come to what? Knowledge. The knowledge of the truth. You can be able to learn. You can learn scriptures. You can quote scriptures. And at one time, I went through that phase. I had to learn all the scriptures in the world. And I, I couldn't sleep at night because I'd be laying down and say, well, Matthew 7, 21 says this. And I'd quote myself in bed. And I really wanted to learn it, but you can overdo things like that sometimes. And I got to a point where I was just staying awake, trying to memorize scriptures. So I could be ever learning and never really come into the knowledge of the truth at all. Uh, blows on me. James 1.22, very familiar scripture if you're taking notes. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Now let's just stop right there, that first part there. Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. Every child of God, and quote that again, every child of God has ears to hear with. They have those spiritual ears to hear. Now, because you hear something doesn't mean you're going to do it. So James pretty well specifies here, he says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if you be a hearer of the word and not a doer, you're like a man holding his natural face in a glass. So you can you can hear, you can have those spiritual ears and hear. Revelation that mentions it several times in chapter two of Revelation it says to the churches, those who have ears to hear. They hear what the Spirit says to the churches. 
Let him hear. Can they hear? But you're not, James pretty well specified, don't deceive yourself because you can be just a hearer only. You got it? You can be a hearer only. So we hear sometimes, but we just don't do it. The question, uh, the question put out in Matthew 5, 47, and this question says, what do you more than others? What do you more? Are you doing more than others? And others here to me to talk about the world. But prior to that, in, uh, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, you back up chapter verse 1, and you, I think the others is talking about the worldly people. And we as God's people, those that hear, and we are to hear and do, and we're supposed to do not only do, but we're supposed to do more than the world. Or the others. Yet. So we are to, are we to be doing more in the workplace? Now I don't work no more as far as a job, but on your job, are you are you uh, supposed to be doing more? Or if you're gonna be a true disciple of Christ, a disciple and a learner and, and a follower of Christ, you're gonna be doing more at work at your workplace. The Bible says over in Matthew 5, 16, a lot, a lot of these scriptures are very, very familiar with you. But Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Are we to let our light shine? Yes. Uh, I, Brother David and Myself, several others, we, years, a couple of years back, I guess, we used to ride motorcycles a lot. Per, I mean, a lot. Different, we wear tires all over them. Yeah. We'd go to Daytona, we'd go to the mountains, we'd go, I mean, we just loved to ride motorcycles. But we looked like a bunch of thugs. We had black jackets on, we called it D-Rags, and we had all these things, and, and we looked tough, we looked bad. We look like a gang, basically. And we'd go to the huddle house, that was one of our favorite spots, right, David? We would, we would get all our gear on, our caps on, and everything, our helmets, and we'd gas up and head out to Nate Hunter. And when we get to Nate Hunter, the people would look at us, and we'd go sit down, and then we'd start studying the Bible, studying scriptures. And a lot of people would hear, over here with the Brother David, what we were talking about. Well, is that letting your light so shine before men to be, okay, not just to be seen of them, but we're to let our light shine. And those people eventually, I met a bunch of people that I could talk with, and they knew I wasn't a hoodlum or a thug. I hope they did anyway. But you're to let your light shine. Before that. So that's, being a motorcycle rider doesn't make you not a child of God. You can be a true disciple wearing all that garb I just told you about. Uh, but Chris, you want to read John 15, John chapter 15. Just read the first six verses. John 15, 1 through 6. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, may bring it forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. You can do nothing without Christ. You got that part that you can't do nothing without Christ. He told me here, he gives the illustration about being attached to the vine. And he says if we if we do what he's commanded, we are attached, we have the abundant life, or the crown of life, or the victorious life, the kingdom of heaven, basically. Uh, so we need to be attached. Christ said, I'm the vine, and ye are what? The branches, so you got life as long as that branch 
is attached to that vine, then you will have life, abundant life. And I've told the story in here about a tree, and that tree is still there. If you want to go to my house and see it, but there's a lightning hit a tree across the field where I'm at. And that tree over a period of time, first of all, it struck a limb about this big, and probably eight or ten foot long, and that thing kept drooping and drooping, but it still had green on it, on the leaves. And it stayed like that and stayed like that for a year or so. And then all of a sudden, the limb fell off, the limb like this, away from the tree trunk, the tree. The tree is still there. It's dead now. It's totally brown. And I don't see how it made through two versions, but it had it. But it, that, Brother David stuck me up on a rotten tree one time. You remember that, Brother David? I had Brother Terry Smith. And I, I thought about this scripture when they were uh, teaching about abiding the vine. Brother David found me a tree. He said, climb up that was perfect. All these deer are going to come out here and there. And you remember me telling you, you showed me that tree? I started, like an idiot, climbing up that tree. And I got up there and that thing started moving back and forth. I got to look at more and observing what was going on. I said, Brother David, this thing is rotten from one end to the other. I get up there 20 foot high. It's going to fall. No, it ain't going to fall. He said, this. But I didn't get up in the tree. But that tree at home is still there, and it's dead in the doorknob, and I don't know what's keeping it up. But this has been windy. But as long as that limbs are attached, they have life. As long as you are attached to Christ, there's life. There's life more abundant. <clears throat> Do you want to be a friend of Jesus? I, I do. Look at verse 8. It says, Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. And then that 14th verse, it says, Ye are my friends if you do. If you what? If you do. Whatsoever I command you. So we're to be doers and not just hearers only. If you're going to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you got to go through suffering and persecution and all these things, and then you can be the friend of Jesus. The Bible teaches us about, any question? The Bible teaches us about being a wise steward. Well, steward basically is a, a child of God that's a doer of God's Word. It says in Luke 12, Verse 40 through 43, I'll read that. And think about this and think about verse 47. Be therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh. Who's the Son of Man? Jesus. Cometh at an hour you think not. Then Peter said to him, Lord, speakest thou this in parable to us, or even to all? And the Lord said, And, and then it is a faith plan, a wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household and give them their portion to meet the due season. Blessed is a servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so, what? Doing. And the servant which knew the Lord's will appeared not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beat with many shots. You can be with, you can be beat with many stripes, and you can be beat with few stripes according. But a, a steward is somebody that's the uh, same as a disciple there to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. I'm going to just briefly mention about the Good Samaritan. I'm going to pull out the verse, one particular part of that verse, but we all know the story about the Samaritan. We heard it over and over and over. The priest went by and the Levi went by and then the Samaritan come along. And after he did all those good works, he was a doer, uh, Samaritan is a, really a pretty picture of Christ doing and forgiving because that was his enemy that he was taking care of. But get down to the latter part of it, he, he said, go and do likewise. We're to do likewise. Likewise what? Likewise the Samaritan did. They not only helped him now, he said, I'll come back and help him later. So we're to go and to do likewise. I told over at camp about Jonah. Jonah was told to do something. 
And you know, we're not to be just hearers only now. We have to be hearers and doers. And Jonah was told to do something. What was he told to do, Chris? Yeah, no. Did he? Yeah, he did. Well, I'll <laughs> He was told to do something, and he did something. He got up, he wrote, he said, Arise and go. Remember that in your mind now. Rise and go. He did the arising, he did go, but he went the wrong thing, the wrong way. So he did something. He was a doer, but he was a learner. He knew. The scriptures well, sure, and all these things, but he would not do, he was going to do what he wanted to do. You ever do that? I'm going to do it my way. No, we need to do it God's way. And Jonah did not do it God's way. God told him specifically, you get up and go. And you go preaching in that big city, Nineveh, and if you're preaching there, tell them to repent, uh, convert them from their ways and, and tell them they need to repent. He didn't want to do that. He took off went the other way. And he paid for it, did he not? You know, he paid the fare, he paid for hell. He got he wound up in the belly of hell. But the main point is he did not do what he was told to do. <clears throat> well, there were two sons over Matthew 21 and 28, I believe it is. Again, let's read Matthew 21, verse 28 through 31. Think about these two sons here. One of them says, I ain't going to do it. The other says, all right, I'll do it. What chapter again? Yeah, Genesis, yeah uh, chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, start verse 28. Yeah, let's read real well. But what think you a certain man had two sons, he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in the vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not, but after he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him the first. And Jesus said unto them, Very I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go to the kingdom of God. One says, he was told to do certain things, he says, I'll do it, I'll do it. You ever hear any people, I'll do it, I'll be right there at 7 o'clock, I'll be there at 6 o'clock. I'll be right there, I'll do whatever you want to do. And then the other one says, I ain't going to do it. Well, these two sons were just opposite of each other. One said he would do it, the other said he didn't. And the other one said he wouldn't, but he did. So, which one was right? First. What, what did he say? He said I won't do it. He said I won't do it, but he went and did it, didn't he? So we have to be like that. Except not like the other one. Turn to Acts chapter 9, if you would. We all familiar with Saul on the road to Damascus. But they you read this morning. Yeah. Okay. So verse 1, don't you think about being a doer, and that, not only that, I told you to remember a while ago, when Jonah, God told him to do what? Arise and go. Now we all know the story about it. Let's read the start of verse 1, Jane, and, and let's think about being a doer. A true disciple is a doer. And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slander, slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Keep and desired of him letters in Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of his way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he so journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, and thou persecutest me. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? What do you ask you? Lord, what are you going to have me to do? All right, here you go. The Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. Arise and go. Who, remember Jonah? Mm -hmm. Arise and go. Jonah didn't go where he was supposed to. Now Saul was later called Paul. 
And when he told him to rise and go, he told him to go to a place called Street Cold Street. And he went to, and seen the M, it was the MI? Yeah. yeah. And he, he said, I don't want to be around this man, basically. He killed Christians. He's liable to kill me. The Lord said, you do what I tell you to do. And that's what he did. And eventually, when he became Paul, he wrote most of the New Testament. And he was a true disciple. And not only Paul was a true disciple, he was a doer of the Word. He was a good soldier for Jesus Christ. He said, I have fought the good fight. That's doing something. So be a doer. I'll just basically in Matthew chapter 25 for sake of time because there's so much here, but in Matthew 25 you had the five, two, and the one talent servants. And each one of them was given measure. And the one that you had the five talents, he gained five more when they come back to be judged for it. And what did the what did the Lord say? Well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. And then the next one, the two talent servant, did the same thing as the five talent servant. He went out and did double it. Okay? And he come back and judged him. He says, Well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Now the third one didn't get to hear that. The third one, he told him that he was a slothful man. Can we be sluggard? Can we do nothing? I thought about that old ant over in Proverbs chapter 3 or chapter 6, I believe it is. That old ant works all the time. He's doing something. And that whole parable is talking about, that, is talking about a sluggard, which is a sorry somebody that won't work. And sometimes we just don't do, we like that sluggard. We don't do nothing. And we'll sit back and take it easy. When winter time comes, he regretted it. But he regretted it. But the, the ants were workers and laborers. They were always doing. Doing. So we're to be doing a couple of scriptures. Psalm 34, 14 says, Depart from evil and do good. Depart from evil. If you're going to be a true disciple and a doer of God's word, don't be around evil. Depart from it. Get away from it. And do evil and do good. And seek peace and pursue it. Which is the kingdom. James 4, 17, it says, if you know to what? Do good, and you don't do it, it's a sin. If you know to do good, you don't do it, it's a sin. The wages of sin is death. Separation from the fellowship of God. The Bible says over in 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good, and thou shalt dwell in the land. You know what the land is. It's the kingdom. I want you to think about this next scripture. And it says several things that just really sticks out. In Colossians 3, 17 through 23, it says, Whatsoever ye did in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and by the Father, by Him. Somebody read, uh, read uh, verse 23. Uh, of, of of this verse, caution three, caution three twenty three. I think it is. I got to read it again. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Yeah, that's it. Do it heartily unto the Lord. <coughs> what whatever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. Just a couple more scriptures and we will be up. But I want to get to this point. If you're going to be a true disciple. You got to be a doer of God's word. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, Whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Every week when I pray before I come to teach here, I say, Lord, I want to glorify you and not me. You're the lesson. I don't need the glory, but we should give glory to God, especially for His word. In Philippians 4, 13, I bet everybody in here knows that scripture. I can do all, I can what? Do all things with Christ that strengthens me. So we can, we need to think, keep that in mind when you think about being a doer. In Genesis 31, 16, 
the latter part of that passage says, Whatsoever God has said to me to do, whatsoever God said to tell you some things to do, you should do it. Matthew 23, 3, All therefore, whatsoever I bid you to observe and that observe and do, but, be, but do not ye after the work, for they say and do not. Sometimes people, we went over that about two sons, basically. And then Luke, two more scriptures. In Luke 6, 33, If you do good to them which the, we do good to you, what think you have for sinners also do the same, even the same? And then 635 says, But love your enemies and do good. But love your enemies and do good. Do we need to love our enemies and do good? That's what I'm actually five thinking about the first part of it before we ever got to all that, be a doer and a hearer and all these things. He says, love your enemies. Bless them that persecute you and spot and use you and say all evil manner against you. So we're to... Well, I'm watching Dudley do right this morning. Y'all, y'all heard me say that. Now, the younger people in here don't know who Dudley do right is. Put up on the internet. He was a Canadian Mountie. And he had, they had a song, do 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 and converted him away from doing evil. So he was deadly do right. We need to all be deadly do right for God. Do what God says and everything will be perfect. Anybody got anything? Nope. There's a lot in that about being a doer. You can, like over in Ezekiel, you can hear, and, but you don't do that. Now, that's the way I am a lot of times. I'm a hearer and not a doer. I need to be doing good. No, do right, do it, if not, to him, it's sin. Okay. Daniel 4, 17, if you quoted those that know do right, don't do it, sin.